Welcome back everybody. As you probably guessed from the title of the video, the ATF is out there infringing on civil rights yet again. And this time it is uh, for the ownership of JSD 80% supply. Um, they run, or up until today anyway, they ran a website where you could purchase 80% receivers as well as firearms parts. And if we just back up here, longtime viewers of the channel know that about a month ago or so, I made a video uh, talking about the ATF's new final ruling on what the definition of a firearm is. In that ruling, they said that it wouldn't take effect until 120 days after that. Uh, obviously, since I just said it was about a month ago, in 120 days, those numbers don't add up. So the rule of what a firearm is uh, would not be in effect, even though the actual ruling itself, of course, is not law. And now we can get into Chevron deference, and that's a video for another day. But I assure you, the ATF does not have the authority to make law. Only Congress does. And what they're saying here in this particular case, which we'll get into in detail here in a second, is that their final ruling on what a firearm is is already in effect, apparently. So they can just see into the future and already start enforcing future laws that, again, aren't laws. Um, but with that, um, we'll just get into the actual cease and desist letter that was given to the folks over at this company. Uh, basically, it says, the Bureau of Alcohol, Tobacco, Firearms, and Explosive is aware that JSD Supply is selling and transferring all components necessary to produce a fully functional firearm to a single customer in one or multiple transactions. So again, all they're doing is selling a 80% item, whether it be, let's say, a clock frame or an AR-15 lower, and then additionally selling them a barrel. Well, I can go to, I don't know, um, a boat store, and I can buy a boat engine, and I can buy a boat transmission. Does that mean that I have a boat? No but apparently the ATF thinks that that's exactly what that means. Uh, they continue on to go over the GCA and state the Gun Control Act and state that ATF has held that kits, which include all components necessary to produce a functional firearm. Now, again, they're not alleging, if you see the first part of this letter, that they're actually selling them in kits. All they're alleging is that they were selling them on their website in one or multiple purchase. So it could be separate transactions, but now they're saying it's a kit held that kits which include all components necessary to produce a functional firearm including the jig or template used to finish the unfinished frame or receiver the slide assembly and the necessary components to complete the frame or receiver are themselves properly classified as firearms under the gun control act specifically these kits are a weapon that may be readily may readily rather be converted to expel a projectile by the action of an explosive. These kits are therefore firearms under the GCA and have always been firearms pursuant to this statute. This is and has been true notwithstanding the recently announced regulations and definitions under the final rule 2021. Now that's absolutely not true. There are a myriad of letters that the ATF has issued prior to the final ruling that state where the ATF themselves is saying these items are not firearms. I mean, literally, like there's at least 10 that I'm aware of, never mind the ones that have never been publicly published because they don't have to publicly publish them. But these have, and there are multiple, that is just an outright lie. It's simply not true. Accordingly, those engaged in the business of selling these complete kits, as your company does, are in fact in the business of dealing firearms. Further, selling the necessary components to complete a functional firearm to the same person through multiple purchases or structured transactions at different times instead of a single sale is equivalent to selling the complete kit to the customer. That is, the complete set of components, parts necessary to create a firearm need not be packaged or sold in a single container or a single transaction in order to be considered a firearm. These piecemeal sales circumvent the requirements of the GCA and are unlawful. Now, again, there's no allegation that these were even being sold as kits. They're just saying that the mere fact that they were on the same website at the same time means that they are firearms. This is brand new. Uh, the ATF has never gone this far, and uh, they're stepping into uncharted territory with this one. I guess they're uh, creating laws even beyond what they've already announced they've created, which aren't laws. And then it says, to lawfully engage in the business of dealing firearms, a person must first obtain a federal firearms license. JSD Supply does not currently possess, nor was it ever issued a FFL that would authorize JSD Supply to engage in the business of dealing firearms. Additionally, JSD Supply does not maintain records as required by the Gun Control Act, nor does it subject its customers to undergo NICS background check, both of which actions are necessary for the lawful sale of firearms. Therefore, JSD Supply must take the following actions. Cease and desist 
the sale of firearms without a license, which again, they've never done. Cease and desist the sale of full set of component parts necessary to produce or readily converted into a functioning firearm, whether in a single transaction or in multiple structured transactions. That is so awkwardly written. Uh, I'm surprised they made it through the read. Immediately and fully comply with and abide by all laws and regulations governing the sale of firearms, frames, and receivers. You guys can see the special agent in charge of the Philadelphia Field Division there is the one who signed it and has his contact information there. So what does this mean? Well, right now, if you go over to the JSD uh, website, they have updated it to say what has happened and that their legal team is looking into it. I'm not sure if they're gonna have to create a interim website that only sells 80% receivers and then a separate website that, see, that sells the other parts. Uh, from what I've read here, that would be in compliance with this cease and desist letter. Um, but my guess is the ATF won't care about that and we'll just go down there and instead of issuing a cease and desist uh, letter, they'll just walk them out in handcuffs uh, next time if they do that. But that's my guess, I do not know that. But being that the ATF is an organization with a long history of doing very similar things to what I just said, uh, that would be my guess. And unfortunately, very likely JSD Supply as an organization will no longer exist um, due to the fact that the federal government can just come in and tell you to shut your business down, which is completely legal and law abiding in every single way. And now the family that owns this company, the family that of the folks who work there are now all out of a job, at least temporarily anyway. Hopefully that is not the case. Hopefully I am wrong, but that is my guess and unfortunately the ATF is doing this with no check and balance at all on their power and it is extremely dangerous you know currently as of what I'm filming this video two AT uh, two rather FBI informants have leaked information about abuses of power going on at the FBI right now to both media and Congress I know there are ATF agents who watch this channel uh, probably some who are assigned by the ATF to do so and I know there are others that watch it just recreationally because I talk to them and uh, if you guys are in the ATF right now and you're somebody who actually believes in your oath of office that you took, I would highly recommend doing the right thing, coming forth and exposing the abuses of power that the ATF is doing. These are only the ones that we see. These are the only ones that are in the media. For each one of these, there's probably 10 or 15 others that we never hear about because the people who this happens to are afraid to come forward, afraid to say anything publicly because the ATF has the power of law. Obviously, there is a FFL right now who is going through a court case, as many of you know, who is accused of essentially encouraging machine gun sales or something. I have a video on that. Anyway, he's actually fighting it. That is rare. Very rarely do people actually fight these trumped up charges because it's so easy for these people to come forward and just say, oh, you're committing a crime. If you just plea out to it, we'll give you a year in jail and a suspended sentence or something like that. And that's how they extort people to do what they want them to do without having to go through the process of actually passing a law. Obviously, the slippery slope here is very wet and uh, very dangerous. So again, if you are an ATF agent who actually believes in the Constitution, which is relatively hard to do if you actually think about it, but I'm sure there are some of you out there. And if you are, come forward, expose what's going on there beyond what we're doing here on my little lowly channel out here on my dock. And uh, I'm sure the scale of it is absolutely astronomical. For those of you who are sitting at home who are not ATF agents, I highly recommend, again, that you contact your Congress re congressional representatives, your governors, etc. Make them know that this is happening. This is unacceptable. I'm sure most of them are unaware that things like this even happen. So get on that. Additionally, all the pro-gun groups who are going to fight this crap, uh, GOA, FPC, uh, NAGR, I'm sure there are others, support them because they're going to need it. These lawsuits take money right now. As of when I'm recording this, there is a significant lawsuit that just came out, I believe this week uh, was filed in Texas, fighting this final uh, uh, version of what they say a firearm is. And um, it's going forth. There are going to be other lawsuits going forward. They all need to be funded because unfortunately the ATF has staff attorneys and the Department of Justice has staff attorneys and it costs them nothing to fight these cases. But us as citizens who are going to fight against these tyrannical laws, it costs us a lot of money, sometimes millions of dollars. So definitely support those groups if that's something you're interested in. With that, we'll close the video up. I hate doing these videos, but they're necessary to expose what is happening. Thank you for watching, all of you. If you're not subscribed and you like this type of video, unfortunately, we do them all the time. So go ahead and hit the subscribe button, and I look forward to seeing everybody in the next video.